So, you finally decided to listen to your mother and eat your vegetables. Good for you. You're fulfilling the mitzvah of Kibbutz Ava'im, honoring your parents. And by eating foods that everyone agrees are some of the best things for you on the planet, you are fulfilling the mitzvah of the Nishmartem Ma'od is not Shosechem, protecting your physical health as much as possible. And best of all, vegetables are naturally kosher and pariv, right? No need to check for a kosher symbol or be concerned about what you eat them along with. Well, not so fast. Before you bite into that salad, you need to know that hiding in many fruits and vegetables may be bugs that you not only don't want to eat, we assume, but that the Torah commands us many times not to eat. The Shulchan Aruch, Jewish Code of Law, and halachic authorities throughout the ages provide us with guidelines on how to ensure that our veggies are halachically permitted to eat. In this video, the Star K classroom is going to demonstrate how to wash and check your fruits and vegetables to make sure they are free of unwanted bugs. You will need to listen carefully and have a keen eye because these pests know how to hide and blend in. Pay attention because you are going to learn how to have your salad and eat it too. Bon appetit! has three levels um, when we talk about infestation and this you know three levels in many different issues but let's talk about infest we're talking about infestation here. the first level is called mosuk um, which means something that most of the time is infested more, more than 50 more than 50 percent of servings of lettuce are infested so if I would have 10 servings of lettuce in front of me and I find a bug in about five or six of them so that would be considered mosuk bitoilon um, now, an example of that is organic produce. Generally, organic produce is considered to be on that level of infestation because, because organic less, has less... less of the, it's hard to say organic has no pesticides, but it definitely has a lot mm -hmm. less pesticides and is definitely much more highly infested than any other type of produce. Um, we generally don't recommend using organic produce. I know that might sound strange, to them, especially to people who are more health conscious. Um, it's not that we don't have anything against organic per se, it's just very simply, actually we, we have a lot to do with organic as you know, I'm sure it's been spoken right. about, you know, um, but we, we deal a lot with the organic industry. Um, but organic produce is definitely much more, you know, has a lot more insect issues and is definitely harder to check. Now again, if, you're, if you know how to check, you can check organic produce mm -hmm. also, but you'll definitely, you'll probably have a harder time and therefore we, you know, we, we try to, it's uh, definitely at least places under our ashkah, we, we generally avoid organic well, produce. When, you, when you're talking about organic uh, produce that is uh, prone to bugs. Prone to bugs, like that's if you correct. you had organic uh, celery, right. that wouldn't... Uh, well, celery might be an issue, but let's talk about organic, organic apples, tomatoes. organic tomatoes, organic right. apples, things okay. that don't have a bug issue, which we'll talk later about that, which items okay. have issues, which items don't have issues. Right. I'll actually talk in a few minutes. Um, so items obviously don't have bug issues, we have no problem with organic produce, but only the items that have insect issues, um, is, organic produce is definitely more prone to infestation, and you know, you'll definitely have a harder time dealing with it. So that's as far as the Moksuk B'Tolayim is concerned. The second level is called Mir HaMotsui, um, which means it's it means less than 50%, but it's still Motsui, it's still found, you can still find um, you know, insects in these, issue, in, in, these, um, in these types of produce. Um, an example of that is most of our, convention, our conventional greens, you know, the romaine lettuce, the iceberg, the cabbages, you know, the, the herbs in general. These are all items that are concerned with Mir HaMotsui. So the exact levels, percentage of infestation in these, in these items um, classically, is defined as anywhere between 10 and 50 percent. Um, anything above 10 percent, up to 50 percent, is in the, in the level of mir hamotzi. Now, the difference between muksuk and mir hamotzi is significant. Something that's muksuk, um, midaraisa, um, you have to check it before you eat it. It's, an, it's a, a, a biblically mandated, um, a biblically mandated requirement. requirement that you have to check that item before you eat it. Something that's mir hamotzi is only midarabonon. Um, the rabbis required you to check it. Um, and there's a lot of differences that we're not necessarily going to have time to get into exact differences between the Darais and Darabonan, but it's very important to note this difference. Um, the third level is what's called Mircha Eno which is generally something, anything that's below 10%. Um, 
So there you get your questions about the cucumber with, right. a, with a bug. Right, exactly. So, 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 so Mira Matsi doesn't necessarily mean that you're nev you'll never find... Mirach Animatsi. I'm sorry, thank right. you, right over. Mirach Animatsi doesn't necessarily mean you'll never find in these items, but it means it's below the level that the uh, Chacham, the Rabbanan, did not require you to check. So it could be you'll find, but it doesn't necessarily mean that now you have a requirement to check. We get calls all the time. People find, you know, in uh, all types of things. They find in cucumbers, they'll find mm -hmm. in a tomato, they'll find in a pepper. Um, so it can happen. You can have a bad batch. definitely can happen. But it doesn't necessarily mean that now, you'll, now you have to start checking these items. So examples of items that are considered miyach animatsi erle nayim, if it walks around, and therefore you can see this little speck walking around, that is considered an early night. You can see it. Right? right, so you know, once you have that aspect in the picture, it really you know, pushes the limits really down as far as what's considered an early night. You know, one recent example that we'll show you now is, um, is about pineapple mites, which are actually very, very small. Um, but I'll, I'll show you in a second. But one last, one last um, based on a question also, is that, you know, and I have it on the slide here also, that loops and light boxes are not you being used to find insects that you can't otherwise see. Um, it's just really to make uh, tools to make it easier and more efficient to check the produce. But by using a paper towel instead of a 60 micron mesh cloth, probably not going to withstand the, the water. The, yeah. the, or it's going to yeah, break, and, break and, and, or rip right through. Pour through. Right through. Um, these, um, the, the meshes that we sell are reusable, by the way. So it's, you know, yeah, it definitely can be reused. Definitely can be reused. Um, so this is actually a, an actual picture of a, of a mite um, on a pineapple. That's not the size. That, that, that's, that's, that's a little bit um, magnified. Um, we have, we have a, a video of it, right? Yeah, we have a video okay, of it. Okay, so we're going to show you that right now. So even if this bug might be a little bit too small, but once you see, once you see this, um, suddenly you see it. This, very, is, very on, this is on pineapple? This is on a piece of pineapple. Right. Okay, so when you see it moving... When you see it moving, obviously that's going to be considered an early anayim. Um, and therefore, you know, based on this is, you know, why we obviously we changed our policy on pineapple, right. but, but we'll go through that. When you look at it, I mean, this is much enlarged. This is much what, enlarged. What enlargement is it? Yeah, what magnification um, is This, I don't know. This was actually taken one of our mashkichim in New York. I'm not sure exactly what size he magnified it at. Um, I mean, we have microscopes here that can magnify things up to eight times. Not that something that's only visible under that level of magnification is nearly nine, but, uh, you know... It, it helps you know what you're talking about. It helps about. you know what we're talking right. about, know what we're looking for. Um, now, the truth is, is that, as I, uh, as I mentioned, that um, one of, you know, it, it, all, as I'll mention now, really, you know, all this, you know, no one's going to walk out of this webinar being an expert. Right. It's just something that takes practice, um, it takes a decent set of eyes, and it takes patience. Um, I always recommend people, the only thing I recommend organic produce for is practicing, getting to know what the insects look like. And if you practice enough, you'll really you'll develop, with, uh, TSI, and you'll develop a good eye to know exactly that, you know, this speck or whatever. I used to think it was a piece of dirt, but now I know that that's an insect, and you can see them very, very clearly. You know, our mashkifim are well trained. They, they have loops, but they really can find the insects even without them. Um, because they know what they're looking for. Once you become used to it, you get Once you become used to it, you become, you become an right. expert. But, but the fact that, that an, only an expert can see it, if only an expert no, can not, see it... No, it's not that only an expert can see it, it's just that you, you just have to... You need some training. You need some, you you need some need practice. Get, right. You need some training, and you need some practice. There's a certain form of an insect, like right. it has legs. But and you, it know, has... you just have to learn what insects right. look like. Right. In the United States, kosher consumers do not need to check flour for infestation at this time. If signs of insect presence are noticed, however, the flour must be checked. This tutorial describes the signs of flour infestation and methods to protect flour products from insects. Special care should be taken by those using flour that has been stored for some time, such as yashin or last year's matzah meal. Often, insect eggs have matured and hatched by this time. Only insects that are visible with the eye present a cautious problem. This is true even if the bug is not discernible without magnification, but can only be seen as a speck. Insects that cannot be seen at all, such as eggs that are common in flour and other foods, do not present a cautious problem because of their microscopic size. When opening the flower, notice if there are small holes in the surface.
This would indicate the presence of the red or confused flower beetle. These red beetles are easy to see on the surface of the flower, but quickly burrow into the flower when exposed to light or activity. Also watch for small black spots. These beetles are about half the size of the letters on a nickel. It takes a strong magnifying glass or microscope to distinguish them from dirt particles. Often the flower will be speckled with these spots when infested. Look for webbing. Moth larvae produce this webbing where they are feeding. Flower or meal stick to the webbing and is easy to detect by the stringy masses of material. To prevent infestation, many people keep flour in the freezer. This may work if the temperature stays at 0 degrees centigrade for 4 days. At this temperature, the eggs will die. If infested flour is found, scrub containers with soap and hot water. Make sure to remove all the flour particles that adhere to the sides of the container, as these are commonly insect eggs, which are coated with a sticky secretion and become covered with flour. Once cleaned in this way, containers will be safe for use. There are three main species found on lettuce and other leafy vegetables. Aphids, thrips, and flies. Aphids are small, round, green bugs. Very difficult to see with the naked eye, their color and size allows them to become virtually invisible on the host leaf. Most aphids measure about one millimeter in length about the size of the letters on a nickel. To properly check for aphids, it is advisable to use a light box. The thicker insect remains dark while light passes through the leaf. Thrips are small elongated brown insects. Roughly the same length as an aphid, these pests are only half the width. Easily mistaken for a piece of dirt, it takes some practice to recognize what is an insect and what is not. In the beginning, many find it helpful to have a magnifying glass or jeweler's loop on hand to confirm the actual identity of the speck. Thrips move very quickly and may run under curls in the leaf when exposed to light. Vegetable flies resemble houseflies. About twice the size of aphids and thrips, this black, winged insect is the easiest to find. Strawberry insects are very small and difficult to see. About one millimeter, or a twenty-fifth of an inch in length, to the naked eye these bugs resemble tiny white grains of rice, a fraction the size of a strawberry seed. These insects are usually found near the top of the berry. They hide in places that match their own white color, such as the base of the greens, or in the depression created by a seed. To properly clean strawberries, Wash them in soapy water. Vigorously agitate the water. Rinse off the strawberries well. Finally, it is preferable to cut off the top with a small amount of the flesh.
I would like to demonstrate the proper way to do a thrip cloth check method, more properly known as Shmata Badika. The items necessary are a light box and a 60 micron piece of mesh, which is why it's called the Shmata Badika, and a basin of water. Take the basin of water, add some dishwashing liquid to the water. Now use soap for a dishwasher, which does not cause any bubbles. The water should be slippery. Take the produce, agitate it in the water for approximately 10 seconds. Shake off the produce. Then technically speaking, you can check the water over a light box in the basin like this. However, the Shmata method is actually more effective and much easier. It's helpful to have two strainers to sandwich the thrip cloth in between. You take the water, pour it through the shmata, then you take the shmata and put it on the light box, and then you check the shmata over the light box. I have here a head of green leaf lettuce. I'm using this variety and not the more common romaine because of its curled leaves. These are quite a bit harder to check, but the actual method is the same for any lettuce. It is advisable to first wash the lettuce. This may remove many of the bugs. Checking a leaf is not an easy task. Lay the leaf on a light box and carefully check every inch for insects, uncurling leaves and flattening bulges as you search. Make sure you see light pass through the entire leaf. When the first side is done, flip it over and repeat the process. If no insects are found, that leaf may be eaten. If there are bugs present, remove them before eating the leaf. Here we have some insects. You can see it has a darker dot against a lighter leaf background when the light shines through it. It's actually moving. Checking lettuce is time consuming. An average head will take about 30 minutes. But for people who want a variety of fresh lettuce, especially those not offered by pre-washed lettuce companies, this is how it can be done. Um, asparagus has two issues. There's two places where the insects can be found. The first place is in the side, under the leaves on the side. Um, a lot of times you'll find thrips there. That's usually the most common thing that's found in asparagus. So the way you do, the way you check with the, so all, generally speaking, all the sides have to be removed. Um, in a situation where you're going to be doing a sample check in large quantities, if you check three servings, which is generally about 15 spears, meaning you remove the sides from 50, all 15 of them and check under them. If they're clean, then the rest of that lot again, can be used. Um, the other area that has to be dealt with is the top. Take a bin of water, again, preferably cold water, even though it might hurt your hands, but um, otherwise the produce will get wilted. 
a dishwashing liquid. Now, the reason why I use dishwashing liquid, really any soap can be used, but regular soap, Dawn, palm olive, any of these things have bubbles, and bubbles are going to sort of going to be very difficult to deal with, and they have to wait till the bubbles dissipate. Dishwashing liquid has no bubbles, so that's why it's the preferred way of doing it. Now, this is going to be your checking water. The, the, way, the way you check asparagus is the following. Take the heads in the water like that. Put the bin on a light box. Do the same thing for you know, all the asparagus that you're going to use. Okay, let's move right along. Let's talk about broccoli. Now, um, broccoli is difficult. If you don't have the patience and the experience to deal with it, um, I don't recommend drying it. Buy one of the Czech frozen brands, Ian Bodek, whichever ones you prefer. Um, but it is, this is how we, I'll just show you how we do it. Um, a lot of Adam Tarvan call me up and ask me, you know, how do you recommend us doing broccoli? And I say, I probably don't. Um, in Baltimore, we have a number of restaurants that do broccoli. Mashkichim there, I have to be very experienced, and I'm constantly checking up on them. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And in these restaurants that do broccoli, Mashkichim do not do anything else. They're not working in the restaurant also, like in the Chinese restaurants we have in Baltimore. They're not working in the restaurant, taking phone calls, making orders, packing up orders, or anything like that. They're only doing mashkichim, which means they're turning on fires, check cracking the eggs, checking in the orders, you know, meat deliveries and things like that that are coming in, and they're doing the vegetables. So they have plenty of time to spend on broccoli. Um, the way we do broccoli is that you do a pre-wash using warm water. Okay, again, the list is very specific. Where it's pre-wash, where there's no pre-wash, warm water, cold water. Generally speaking, you should pre-wash, and generally speaking, you should use cold water unless it says otherwise. Use warm water. The reason I use warm water is because Cauliflower, by the way, is the same thing. We treat it the same, even though it's probably not as bad as broccoli, but we just we treat it the same way. Um, broccoli is very, can be very tight. Um, when, you, when you wash it in warm water, it sort of loosens up. Not necessarily hot water, but just warm water will loosen up the tops a little bit. We require them to do two pre-washes in soapy water before we even bother checking it. It's both for practical consideration that they're just not going to get it to pass unless they do that. Plus, they do that first. And um, also from a conscious consideration that we're not even willing to give it a shot, you know, from a conscious perspective, unless they do that pre-wash. So I'm assuming this is pre-washed, so it's the same procedure as well. Take the cascade, um, put it in the water, make sure the water feels soapy. Um, you could take heads this big, you can break, you can break them down also a little bit if you want. Um, the difference with broccoli and any other vegetable is that we don't do any sample checking on broccoli. Broccoli, every single piece has to be checked, has to be put in the water and then checked that way. So it's the same thing. Um, this, is a good, this is a good size head that we generally use. So you take it, you agitate it. Generally we use a bucket which is a little bit higher, but agitate it very strongly in the water and I'll make, I'll make a little mess. Shake it off a few times, knock it against the sides a few times like this, and you'll know you do a good job if the water gets piecey in pieces of broccoli, um, which is one of the reasons why it makes it hard to check. Um, and then we let it sit in the water for about 15 seconds, and then we do it one more time. Okay, and then the same process. Check the water, pour it from the third cloth, check the third cloth. Okay. Um, so again, that's broccoli, and you know it's it takes a certain level of expertise to broccoli properly, and therefore, if you're not, you know, you have to decide for yourselves you're ready to do it.
um, scallions and leeks. Generally speaking, the place where insects are found are inside the tube. So all you have to do is slice open the tube on everything you're going to be using, which usually is not much. Um, or you can do a chazaka check. Again, that's up to your local price scheme. Um, but <coughs> do not pre-wash it, because again, you're trying to do a sample check over here. Um, slice it open as far down as you're going to use it. You're using all the way down to the bulb. Slice it all the way down to the bulb and check the inside. You don't necessarily need a light box, you'll see it right away. The, the insects found in here are generally white and they move very, fit, very fast, so you'll see them right away. Um, and that, that's the same thing for leaks, it's the same idea. For those of you who think this looks like a piece of paper, um, it's not. It's a thread cloth. It's about 30 microns, which is extremely, extremely small. Um, and this is what it, you need in order to find these mites that are on grapes. So they're very small. Um, I sat down with her behind me with a sample that someone brought us of these mites. And thank you very much. And um, we're, we, we are chayshu that they're We are chayshu that they're We're going to consider them nearly like nine. You know, you're welcome to do our research on that. We're going to consider them nearly nine. Um, but also because the method of dealing with it is not such a big deal. Basically, they have to be broken down into smaller clusters, which is fine, like this. You know, it used to be the way I used to wash grapes. You take the whole bag, run under the sink for a quick second, or swish it around the water, and then you're finished. Now, what we require is take the, take the cluster like this, run it under a stream of water. You don't have to separate every grape, run it under a stream of water, and that's all you have to do. Once you do that, the, according to all the experts that I spoke to, did the research, um, and to their credit, they did a very good job in the research. They all, what the consensus was, they all considered it to be below the level of the matzoi once you do that process of washing. 